was in Costco uh, a few days ago and saw that Cafe Vita had some light roast uh, whole bean coffee available at Costco. And they're a great local coffee company here in Seattle. And um, always curious and looking for you know, new coffees to try, uh, especially from other roasters and with the Costco. You know, you never know what you're going to get in that bag, uh, whether it's over-roasted, under-roasted, you know, everyone has their own preferences with the roast level. So uh, every once in a while I see something at Costco that feels like it's worth the, the risk of trying and at least seeing what comes out of it. And uh, the Cafe Vita seemed like something that was worth it. Uh, I think listed as a, I'll check the bag, but maybe a medium, medium roast, good for a drip, good for espresso. Um, and I'm usually, uh, unfortunately, way too picky on my roast level, but uh, difficult to probably get a good shot. Uh, definitely no oil. We don't seem to have any oil on the bean. Definitely looks like a nice medium roast. It looks fantastic. I was excited. It's still a little uh, you know, unburnt section in the middle there, the chaff or whatever's still left in there. Um, just lightly, a nice medium roast. I, it was nice to see that it wasn't an oily hot mess going on in there claiming to be a light roast. So uh, I did pull a shot or two of this with this already this morning and it worked out really well. I'm going to try just one more time here with each and uh, with each of the grinders and see what comes out of it. I haven't gone super uh, dialing in at this point. I'm just trying to uh, get us close in the ballpark like I said because usually my roasts are so much lighter uh, to go a little darker is required a little extra um, you know, just fine tuning with the uh, with the grinders, which is no big deal and all part of the program. And I thought would be interesting to see since I'm always pushing the light roast. So to go with something a little more medium, uh, it's a, looks like a nice roast. So it tasted great. The couple that I had off it, we're not where we want to be exactly, but we're close. So it was hopeful. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and get started with a couple of these. Um, my temp is set at 222 on the PID, and I know we're seeing. 223 so point that out and remember there's some variance now we've dropped down to 222 as it tries to keep it at that level there's going to be some degrees of fluctuations this isn't the space shuttle nasa technology here this is a you know a rancilio sylvia with a pid attached to it in an effort to try to get uh, some uh, temperature consistency that's it we're not um, we're not claiming to put a man on the moon here with this or with the grinders, as you can likely tell by seeing what you have. I always just view these as uh, the things a guy starting out at home might have or have access to and uh, might be struggling with. And so my hope with some of these videos is to sometimes give uh, hope to the guy who's lost that you know he can't get anything dialed in, it won't work, it's so frustrating and agreed it can be, but hang in there, it'll, um, you can find a a nice zone with a little luck and just keeping at it. So all these I, I usually think or add is starts with great beans. People, you're gonna hear tons of advice on everything about the espresso machine, that's fantastic. But if you don't have some good beans to get started or something you're gonna enjoy, it's not gonna be, um, they need to be fresh. Uh, they need to be a roast level that hopefully that you're looking for and um, that's a great place to start. So there are a lot of variables hanging in there. Uh, zero out the portafilter. I'm using the bottomless here. I think the basket is the same basket I'm always using. You can come up with a number for that. Um, if that's helpful to somebody, I'll try to add that in. And then um, let's weigh out. I usually try to get that 18 gram zone. Let's weigh out the portafilter here. Let's see what that is. Definitely on the coarser side, a little back off my lighter ones. That's 18 and a half, 18.56. So we're not gonna goof around with that. There's the dosing ring to help hold everything in. I use the little homemade uh, rake, a little spin this the pile to at least get that distributed then whip through all the grounds just in an effort to kind of break up any clumps or just to get a kind of a fresh start of distribution there 
and level out the top. So let the Mona Lisa here, you just do a little tap. Calibrated tamper that has that little weight spring in there, so it kind of gives me some um, consistency with my tamping. You end up with something like that. Lighting maybe poor. Uh, checking the spring, the little uh, retaining ring that's in there as a basic guide to make sure you're pressing down somewhat flat. We're definitely up to speed. We're up to temp. We're going to start this and the timer. I like to get a drip out of that thing by the seven second zone to think I'm in the right area. It appears to be there. Who knows? Stop at a weight about 36. I'm not looking at the timer in my hand because I'm not doing the dance between them both. We're going to hit 36 right there. Uh, so that's 27 seconds. That's what we end up with. Um, nice crema coming off of that. I can't see if we can get any angles or anything on that. So let's set that there for the second. Let's take a peek at this. Good looking top, very slight indentation, or at least even not even indentation, just where, uh, where that uh, set screw is in the second, in the center there. Let's get rid of that. This off, clean this out. All right, pull that junk out of there. on that thing. Let's get this back in here for a second. All right, so again, at least a shot of the roast level that we're dealing with here is definitely a nice medium. No signs of oil on the bean, not an overdone, you know, darker roast or a typical espresso roast by any means. So um, getting a nice shot out of that in the time frame we were looking for. 27 seconds, not bad. That was with the Breville. We're gonna try the Rocky. this. That's one step better. Add the dosing ring on top. Zero this thing out if we can. A lot of wiggling and on that rubber mat. break to show, or if it's still possible, those clumps that the Rocky Grinder does get. Wow, that is just some clump galore in there. Look at the size of those things. Horrible. All right, let's see where we're at here. We are at 17.93, zero, so we're stopping. That's close enough for me. Let's break this stuff up. This grinder is set down to zero. I recently cleaned and calibrated. I'm down to basically the next down is, uh, next uh, adjustment down is burr is touching, so we're definitely there. Broken up all the big clumps the best I can. A little tap. Let's try the calibrated tamper. Again, the concept of that is you certain pressure compresses down. That. We're here. definitely over temp at 224. Uh, we could wait as it drips drifts down or we can just roll it in here. This will get things going. Got 
the drip going already. Pretty steady stream, might be a little fast, let's see. Where we end up, we're aiming for 36, not watching the timer, going for the volume. This is 26, so both really in a close time frame. Same thing, view the crema in that, looks good. Uh, pretty similar, not getting the indentation in the center where the screw was, that's great. The tops look very similar, no huge obvious signs of a channel or something going wrong in that. shots, uh, same bean, two different grinders. Uh, you could tighten both of these up just a bit, right? Well, not this one. That's that, that's that's it. We're there. You tighten that up a pinch. You can add a little bit. I can't remember. I'll have to go back and watch the video. Might have been a little light here. You can maybe go up another half a gram. And that would slow us down a pinch. Um, if that's that important or critical, uh, but you're Get a nice shot out of both of these. Let's do a quick stir and spin. This one has obviously had some cool down time. It's nice. What I, no smoky flavor, none of the burnt, none of the over roast. Like it. It's it's fantastic. It's great. I should be more complimentary of it. Maybe the slightest bit more of a little bit of a high note to it, of a little bit more of a high flavor. Both are great. A rare compliment for me is buying beans out somewhere and not throwing them away. I would use these and we'll use these. This is, this is a um, one of the best store-bought, off-the-shelf roasts that I've had in a long time. It's, without being especially at a specialty coffee shop, one of the local places, buy something off the shelf at Costco and have it be this good, it was fantastic. I would definitely give it the thumbs up to try. Uh, if you like those lighter, medium roasts, um, may not have the, it's not gonna have that smoky flavor that you guys with the traditional espressos are uh, looking for. It's just, it just doesn't have that, but that's what gives it the, thumbs up from me so thank you guys hope this helps again the point of any of these stupid drawn out long videos is to help anybody with a sylvia with a breville or a rocky and you're fighting to figure out how to figure, get everything lining up and these are examples that you can work you can get a decent shot of espresso out of these things hang in there be patient and uh, stick with it Everything I did here today is not a lesson or an example for you. It's just how I pull my shots lightly. Um, again, open to any questions or comments you have on things. Appreciate the uh, communication I've had with a lot of great people out there. Thank you guys.